Good morning, church. A very, very happy Easter to all of you. Today, we celebrate that Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen. And it's not just today, but we remember it every day that He has conquered sin and death and He is alive today. So, I'd like to invite all of us to just take a few moments to read Luke chapter 24. Was this one to eight, and I'll be reading from the NIV. Let's read this together. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Let us pray. Let's take this time to ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us as we are about to spend some time in praise and worship, singing unto the Lord, thanking Him for all that He's done. Jesus, we thank You that we get to celebrate this truth today, that You are alive and You have won it all for us on the cross. And as we sing, O oh Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, remind us of this hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite all of you to stand and let's spend some time singing to the Lord and let's enjoy this time, Savior of the world. Let's sing together.
alive today no matter what happens no matter what our circumstances look like we can face every day because Jesus lives let's sing together because he lives Tomorrow 
Fears are gone. Jesus, we take this moment right now to just thank you. Thank you that not only you died on the cross for our sins, but you rose again from the dead so that today we can have a victorious overcoming life. you have overcome the world. You were always fighting for us. Heaven's angels song around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my Savior and my friend. By your grace I live and bring to worship you. At the mansions of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence here is silent, for you wear the bitterest man. Let your glory fill Shall be 
Romans chapter 8 verses 11 that very truth that same spirit of God that raised Jesus to life is actually alive in me and the many times that I've ignored that I've forgotten and so I'd like for all of us to just thank God that this very spirit that raised Jesus to life is the same spirit that is at work in us. Oh Jesus, we thank you. Let's sing this song together.
is risen from the grave. Jesus, we thank you that you're speaking to us through the songs. We thank you, Lord, that you are at work in our hearts right now. And we ask that you continue to speak to us throughout the service, Lord, even as we hear the word that's going to be preached to us. Holy Spirit, bring those truths so clearly to us. Help us to be very, very attentive to what you have to say. We thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Elder Chi Kyung to share the announcements. Thank you, Nisha and the worship team for leading us this morning. Uh, very, very blessed Easter to all of you here this morning. It's uh, good to have so many of us uh, coming this morning to um, worship and to celebrate uh, Easter, to celebrate our risen King Jesus. I'd like to just uh, take this moment to maybe get everyone to just turn around and say, good morning, welcome, blessed Easter to those around you. Uh, just to greet them and say hi to them, yeah? We do have some um, programs lined up for this morning, um, but before that, why don't we just uh, quickly run through the announcements for uh, church this morning. So uh, first and foremost, worship by giving. 
Um, you can give to the ministry of the church to support the different ministries uh, of Hope ESC. You can also give to our relief fund. We continue to utilize our relief fund to help the poor, the needy, and also our brothers and sisters in ESC Myanmar. So if you would like to give to the different uh, uh, ministries and support of church, just scan the QR code. Uh, on the screen and then designate your giving to the different uh, ministries. You can also give cash to uh, uh, via the, the offering boxes that's available at the back of the hall here and over at Fellowship Hall as well. So uh, we'll give probably about a minute to do this uh, um, um, transaction of the, of, the, of the QR code and all. Yeah? Thank you. Um, the next announcement, um, if any one of us here who are interested in baptism, uh, getting baptized or interested in becoming a member of Hope BFC, do come and see any of the elders after the service today and we will give you more information yeah, on baptism and membership. Okay, our uh, refugee school uh, that we've been uh, supporting all these years, uh, CTC, will be having their uh, charity dinner concert coming up in the month of July, on 20th of July at uh, Yuk Chai School. Um, so every two, two years or so, we will be uh, conducting a, a charity dinner <coughs> to raise uh, funds and support for our refugee school. Yeah? So the uh, enrollment in the school, from what I hear from our brother James, is that it has already exceeded 300. So um, the numbers continue to grow. Okay? It started with a little group of like 10, 15 kids many years ago, but today we have more than 300. And the numbers keep growing because as you all know, right in, in Myanmar right now, uh, because of the civil war, there are quite a number of new refugees that are coming into Malaysia with them, families and children as well. So do come and support um, our, uh, our charity dinner, right? Um, we are selling tables, uh, gold table and silver table, uh, table at different prices. Uh, do share this with your family members, your friends, your colleagues, right, who uh, may be keen to support uh, the, the refugee school, right? So for more information, you can speak to our brother James. Um, yeah, James is not here this morning. He's not well, that's why I'm here. But never mind. Come and talk to the elders as well and uh, we will give you more information on our CTC uh, charity dinner. Okay, this is for um, Kingdom Kids outing, okay? Um, the, uh, for the Kingdom Kids uh, family and kids and all those who are here with kids. Um, we are having a outing to Petro Science Discovery Center. The last time I made an announcement, I thought it was Aquaria. We are not seeing fish. We are going to do some science, science, science thing, okay, right? So, Petro Science Discovery Center, uh, 6th of April, coming up very, very soon, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at, of course, KLCC. For more information and to register, please see our brother, John Chang, okay? It's written that all are invited. All, uh, that means regardless of age, okay? So if you are keen, you want to get your hands on all these science, science things, okay, do come and join us right, for this uh, outing on the 6th of April. Right? If we get 20 people and above, you get a 10% discount. So, yeah, so all are invited. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's all for the announcements for this morning. Um, as I've shared, um, before we go on to the program, right, uh, we would like to take this time to welcome two new members to Hope ESC. Uh, two persons have applied to become uh, a member of Hope ESC about a month ago. We put up the notice on the board. Uh, no rejections. No objections. Sorry. No objections. Not rejections. No objections. Okay. All right. So, so this morning, we would like to officially welcome them. Um, so I'd like to invite our sister, Elizabeth Cole Pang, uh, and also our brother, Titus, to come up to the stage. As we extend the hand of fellowship, I'd like to also invite the elders to come up as well and to extend the hand of fellowship on behalf of Hope ERC and also to pray for them. Yeah. <laughs> Today is a bit nervous. Yes, what speech? Welcome, welcome. 
Okay, I'll just invite our brother Chen to just pray for Liz and for Titus. Yeah. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the life journey that have brought Titus and Liz into our midst. We welcome them to join us when we celebrate the unique contribution that they have been making to the church and will continue to make to the church. We pray that they will continue to use their gifts and the talents that you have richly endowed on them. May this church offer to them support in times of trouble and rejoice with them in good times and always. May our church together become a home to them and to us. And all this for the sake of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, thank you, Chen. I wanted to ask Titus to make a speech, but uh, <laughs> he's a bit shy. All right, so welcome, Liz and Titus, to the family of Hope EFC. Uh, let's uh, give them a welcome clap, okay? All right. Okay, um, we have a, a few things lined up for this morning. Um, we, we have our Kingdom Kids uh, presenting uh, this morning, all right? Uh, so the teachers and the children have come up with uh, a program, as well as uh, a, a young uh, team. They call themselves the Jamming Group. There's just no... Anyway, yeah, so they will be presenting some songs this morning as well. So um, just to start thing off, I'd like to invite our sister Clara to just give an introduction to the Kingdom Kids and uh, what they're presenting today. Good morning, everyone, and a blessed Easter. Yeah, um, the children of, from Kingdom Kids, they are very excited. All right, they have been waiting for this very moment, and uh, they have been practicing. And uh, so we are, you know, they, they, why are they practicing? Because this is their first time, first time uh, involving themselves in celebrating Easter with us. So first, we're going to uh, show uh, video, short video clips and our senior Kingdom Kids children have been interviewing some of the members of our congregation questions about Easter, why we celebrate Easter and why must Jesus die on the cross for us. As well as, uh, you know, it's so heartwarming to listen to some of the children uh, responding by some of the questions we ask them, uh, if you see Jesus today, if you meet Jesus today, what would you say to Jesus? And are we going to listen to their response afterwards? So that's the first program. The second one, our junior children, age four to six, they're going to present a song, of course, with some hand movements. And uh, they have been practicing for weeks already. And uh, they're going to sing a song for us entitled, God is Good. Indeed, God has been good and faithful, and especially of this time, uh, I hope that uh, you will give them a good round of applause after that. All right, so uh, I'm going to commit this time to the PA team to show us the video first. Thank you. We are What's the question? <coughs> why, why, do, why should we celebrate Easter? Easter is the day that we remember Jesus rose from the dead. Right? Remember Jesus was put on the cross and he was killed for our sins. And then Easter is the day where he came back to life. So we are very happy for this day in Easter. Can I know your name? Emma, how old are you, Emma? Six. Six years old. All right, I, good. I, I am four years old. You are four years old, and what is your name? Almost. Almost. Easter is about Easter egg? No. No. It's not big. Jesus have to die to save us all from sin and death because in Isaiah chapter 
the 53 verse 5 to 6 5 to 6 says that but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by all his wounds we are healed we are all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all Die on the cross because for our sins we celebrate we love resurrection. Um, Easter day Jesus come be alive, come back alive. Hello. Good morning. Hello.
We are going to be singing a song today. It's entitled, Is He Worthy? Hello. Of course, this is a song about our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we are asking, really, you know, who, who is worthy? Who is the one who can save the world, basically? <laughs> And I'll be joined with Rohan and family, as well as Aiden and Titus. And Rebecca will be singing for us today. So, do enjoy. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Shadows deeper, we do. But do you know that all the dark would stop the light from getting through? We do. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And is Jesus our Messiah who forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with Worthy. Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is taking truth and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? 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 Is He worthy?
pass the time back to our worship leader to introduce the next. I'll pass the time back to our speaker, uh, Pastor David Lowe. He's going to be... I'll pass the time to CK. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot um, and team. <laughs> it's all right. Um, yeah, God is good. God is gracious. And yes, He's truly worthy of all our worship this morning. Yeah, so um, just before we uh, pass the time uh, to the speaker for this morning, um, we have our um, special uh, children's moment where we invite all the children from Kingdom Kids to come up to the front. Um, so if parents, if your children are here this morning, would you bring your children up to the front? And then our uh, teacher, Pavin, will be sharing uh, a short uh, children's moment with the children this morning on the Easter message. So um, maybe we can get the parents to bring your children up to the front to be seated uh, on the floor here. And then our teacher, Pavin, will take over the session now before we pass to the speaker. Good morning. Yes, come. Let's have all the children ages 4 to 12 or even younger if you want. Just come up front. 12 and below, all the children come up front. I'm going to sit here on the stage. So I want you children to sit just in front of me. Okay, fine. There's lots of space here. All right. You can just make yourselves comfortable. You can sit. Yeah, you can sit next to me, some of you. Yeah, as long as you're near me. Come. You can sit here. Yeah, mommy, you want to sit on the chair? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so as long as you can see me and can hear me, okay, all the children, come, 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 come. I have something to tell you about this. Okay, what is this? I, I, um, maybe the boys, do you want to come nearer? Yeah, okay, come sit in front. It's okay, you can sit on the floor, it's all right. Yeah, come, come sit here. Can you see? You have to be able to see me. Maybe I'll sit on the, on the floor, maybe in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, come, you sit down, okay? Yeah, surprise, that's right. All right, Jaden, um, we can have a mic so that we can hear the children as well. Um, Aiden, can you get me a mic so I can, so I can hear the children respond? Ah, okay, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, this is a mic so you can say hello. Say hello. Hello. Can't hear you. Is this on? Okay. Hello. Yes, hello, Marcus. Okay, hello, everyone. Say hello. hello. Hello, Emma. Okay, good. So, what day is today? You know what day is today? Easter. That's right. Today is Easter. We're celebrating it. Easter day. That's right. Today is, today is Easter Sunday. That's right. Okay, so what does Easter remind you? Okay, what does Easter make you think about? Jesus? What does Easter make you think about? Anyone? Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. For God. Think about God. Anyone else? Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. What do you think about when Easter? Okay. Anyone think about this? <laughs> okay, what I have here. It's an egg, okay? Uh, it's not the real egg. Sometimes during Easter, people play this uh, game called an Easter egg hunt. Have you played a game before? Easter egg no. hunt? No. Okay. It's actually... I it's only a, play treasure hunt. It's like egg hunt. Oh, you only play treasure hunt. Yeah, this is like a treasure hunt, okay? How you play the Easter egg hunt, right? Um, well, people will look for this egg and they try to find as many as they can. All right? And then it's a very fun game. And then, um, and children really love playing with it. And then after that, they put the little, uh, little uh, surprises inside the egg. What do you think is inside? What do you think is inside? Anyone want to take a guess? Sweet. Sweet. What do you think is inside? Candy. Candy. Yeah. So, okay. What I want you to do today is that can you think of this Easter egg as a tomb? Do you know what's a tomb? Okay, a tomb 
is a place inside a cave where they put dead people inside. All right? Uh, it's actually a, a place in the cave where they put dead people inside. Yeah, that's the, like the picture on the screen. That's right. All right? So when Jesus gave his life to die on the cross for us, for the, for the punishment of our sins, the Bible tells us that they took the body of Jesus and they wrapped him in clean cloth. And then where did, he, where did they put him? What did they do to, the, to Jesus' body? Inside the tomb. Yes, inside the tomb. All right, so, and then what was in front of the tomb? Do you know? Yeah. Was it just an open tomb? No. Did they put something in front? Yes. Yes, what did they put in front of the tomb? A giant rock. Yes, that's a giant rock. That's right. The Bible tells us that they put a, a, a stone in front of the tomb. Is it just like any uh, simple, easy to move stone? No. What kind of stone? What kind of stone did they put in front of the tomb? It's a big, heavy stone, right? Yeah. Yes. Because they want to make sure that nobody can get inside the tomb, right? And on top of that, to make super sure that nobody can open the... the, the or only the angel, yeah, that's right. So they want to make sure that nobody can go inside and steal Jesus' body. So what did they do on top of that? Big rock. Yeah, ah, that's right. They, add a, they put a big rock and then on top of that, they put another layer of protection in front of the tomb. What did they do? Do anyone, anyone know? Yeah, Emma, that's right. They put soldiers in front of the tomb. They did not want to make sure that they, they didn't want Jesus to leave and they want to make sure that nobody comes near the tomb, right? Now, one thing about Easter is that it's just like how we celebrate Christmas, right? When we celebrate Christmas, it reminds, uh, we think about what? Christmas tree, presents, uh, food, maybe some of you, you know, and then we think about, uh, maybe some of you think about Santa Claus or something like that. You know, sometimes we get... Uh, yeah, sometimes we get distracted from the actual reason uh, why we celebrate Christmas. Okay, why do we celebrate Christmas? Because Jesus is born. Yes, that's right. We celebrate the birth of a Saviour. Christmas is when we celebrate the birth of a Saviour. And today, we are celebrating Easter. Right? Can anyone tell me why do we celebrate Easter? Why do we celebrate Easter? Anyone? Jesus is alive. That's right. To remember Christ's resurrection, Christ's death on the cross for our sins, and His resurrection. That's why we celebrate Christmas. So, uh, sorry, Easter. <laughs> so, okay. What if I say, imagine that this is a tomb, and um, all right. You know, one thing about Easter eggs is that why they are so magical is when you shake. This, uh, then you, you get very excited, right? And you want to know what's inside, right? So there's something really magical. But what if I tell you that there's something even more magical than this? What if you find out that actually there's nothing inside? But actually there's nothing inside. You know why? Because Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. Jesus is risen. Right? It's, right? So Jesus was in the tomb and then he was resurrected. Because he's alive. <laughs> so whenever you see an Easter egg, I want you to remember that the real miracle is not that Jesus was inside the tomb, but that on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive again. Right? That means that Jesus has overcome death for all of us. So what does that mean for all of us? 
What happens to us when we die? When we put our faith in Jesus, what happens to us when we die? Anyone? What will happen to us when we die? What happened to our bodies when we die? When we put our faith in Jesus, the Bible tells us that we will be resurrected to be with God in heaven forever. That's good news, isn't it? Yes, everyone thinks the good news? Say, hey, amen. Hey, amen. amen, that's right. So whenever you see the egg, what will you remember? What do you remember? The good news that Jesus is alive. All right, so I want you to listen to Pastor David, our, our preacher for today, uh, who will tell us more about this good news of the Easter and how it can be a very best news for you ever. Can you do that? Yes? And Jesus is resurrected. Yeah, no more. Alive. Yeah, how? I'll show you the trick later. <laughs> okay, so before you go, children, I, I want to give out the sermon notes. All right, to help you listen and follow the sermon. So all the give to the younger ones. Yeah, yeah the, for the younger. All right, so everyone grab a copy of your sermon notes. All right, the younger one. Yeah, these are for the younger ones. Uh, this one is for the. Yeah, thank you. Is the older one? You know what's the first one? All right. It's the younger one. Yeah. This is for you. Okay, so after uh, you go back to your seats, all right, you will fill out the sermon notes. And parents, if you're here today, please help your child and guide them through to fill out the sermon notes. At the end of the sermon, please come back to me, all right? And I have a little gift for Everyone who has filled out their sermon notes. Oh, sorry. How old are you? How old are you? Eight years old. Okay. Yes, yes. And this is your. Ah, eh, eh. Oh, your. This is Hey, thank you, Payne and the Kingdom Kids teachers and all the children uh, who come here. I've got to ask my wife to teach me how to do this. Why well, got sound? Then got no sound. No sound. Anyway, all right. It's good to have the kids up here with us this morning uh, and, and to share the the word of God. Before I invite uh, Pastor David over, uh, up for the message, I'd like to uh, invite our brother Chin An to come out and read for us the scriptures for this morning. So, Brother Chinan. We're reading from the NIV version, 1984. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they say, we remember that while he was still alive, the deceiver say, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he may be raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go. Make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Madeline and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, Roll back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook 
and become like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clapped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests that everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them, You are to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we are asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will, testif- we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as what they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Brother Chinan, for reading us uh, to us the Word of God this morning. I'd like now to invite our speaker for this morning, Pastor David Lowe. Pastor David Lowe was uh, formerly the senior pastor of Emmanuel EFC, and then he's currently leading the Haggai ministry in Malaysia. So it's good to have uh, Pastor David with us this morning. So, Pastor David, uh, we'll pass the time over to you. Yeah. Hello, hello. Is the mic on? Is the mic on? Yes. Huh? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elder Chi Kiong and uh, other the leaders of the church for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God with you this morning. Don't worry about the thick book here. Huh? I'm not going to preach through the book. <laughs> Let us commit our time to the Lord. Father, we just want to give you thanks this morning. Even as we celebrate Easter, Lord, we want to hear from your Holy Spirit what this means for all of us, for followers of our risen and resurrected Lord and Savior. So speak, Holy Spirit, this morning to all of us, even as we listen. We thank you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, This morning, I want to to share on the case of the empty tomb. How many of you remember this man? Anyone? Anyone remember this man? George Madowell, yeah, the young, the, the, the young ones will know. <laughs> the younger ones wouldn't know because he is of uh, our generation. He's now eight, over 80 years old. 
Now, as a young man, more than 60 years ago, he considered himself an agnostic. He didn't believe in God. Believed that God and Jesus, they were all fake. They were all man-made. And that Christianity is worthless. That was what he taught as a young man during that time. And while studying law at the Kellogg Community uh, College in Michigan, there was one group of Christians sharing the gospel with him. As presumably, they would have touched on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And George Madowell mocked at these Christians for being so naive, so ignorant to believe in the resurrection of Jesus. He said, these are all fake. What the group of Christians did during that time, they challenged him. Okay, you said it is fake. Can you prove us wrong? We say it is true. Can you prove us wrong? Being a law student, he thought, piece of cake. No problem. That's what he did. He set out to intensively research through all the historical documents, he traveled to Europe. And after an intensive research, he had to admit that the facts, the evidence that he had researched through showed that Jesus really did live, died, and resurrected. And if that was true, he said, God had to be real. And he wrote in uh, the result of his research in this book called Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Now, this is 600 over pages, quite challenging to go through, right? I haven't finished it. <laughs> There's a paperback one, 150 pages. Now, that is more palatable, easier to devour. So, you can get the, the paperback copy and read through that book. Or, if your friend uh, struggle with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that will be a wonderful book to give as a gift to this friend. I remember 15 years ago, I was with my friend. He just came back from Toronto, TV Lim. Uh, he was a good friend of uh, uh, Buntai. He didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said, how can a man who died and come back to life Impossible. Couldn't believe it. And I gave him that book to read. Just last Wednesday, I reconfirmed with him. TV. What made you change? Because I asked him, do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ now? He said, yes. I said, what made you change? 15 years ago, you didn't believe. Now you are so convicted. He said, this is a threshold of my faith in Jesus. If I don't believe in this, everything falls to the ground. And that is exactly in the New Testament, the writers focuses on, uh, focus on uh, in their teachings, in their writings, in their recollection. Jesus' resurrection was the focal point of their teachings. And everything that you and I believe in rises or falls on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
This is exactly what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 and 18. If Christ has not been raised, your faith and my faith is futile. You are still in your sin. And those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Our Christian faith stands or falls on the bodily resurrection of Jesus. For Paul, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then Christianity is fake, is false, is a lie. We will still be judged for our sins. And all those who have died are lost forever. That is why Paul says in a, a few verses later, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then better to change our motto for living. If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. In other words, if the resurrection is not true, we may as well just eat, drink, and be happy, for tomorrow we die. That's it, period, nothing else. Is that true? There are some people who live like that. They just don't believe in the afterlife. After death, that's it. Before Jesus died, Jesus predicted three times in the gospel. And here in the gospel of Matthew, In the Gospel of Matthew, I just take one from Matthew chapter 20, verse 18 and 19. While going up to Jerusalem, the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. This is Jesus himself predicting his death and his resurrection. Now, any one of us can also claim this. I can also claim that after I die, I will be raised to life three days later. Question is, can I back it up? Can you back it out? Do you have the power to do that? Do I have the power to do that? We know very well that we dare not make such a claim. But Jesus made this claim. In fact, when people hear this kind of claim, they will ask for evidence. And Jesus gave them the evidence, the sign of the resurrection. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 40. Some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want a sign from you to prove that you are the Messiah. Jesus answered, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus was giving very, very specific sign referring to his resurrection this is the test by which we know whether Jesus was telling the truth 
this historical test is very unique to Christianity. No other religion has this kind of test. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then Jesus was a false prophet and a counterfeit and no one should follow him. Conversely, if Jesus did rise from the dead, this event, the resurrection, will confirm his radical claim that he is the true Messiah. There is no ambiguity here. It's either yes or no. No room for any ambiguity. Either Jesus rose from the dead, confirming his claims to divinity, or he was a fraud. So, can we know for sure whether Jesus' resurrection actually occurred? Is there enough evidence for a rational person like George McDowell, like you and me, to be justified in concluding that Jesus' resurrection was a real historical event? that took place 2,000 years ago. We thank God and we are happy to know that the evidence for Jesus' resurrection is extremely compelling based on actual facts and historical evidence that people has been examining throughout the centuries. This morning, we will look at three important facts of the empty tomb. Why the Roman guards was posted to guard the tomb. Why the Jewish leaders chose to cover up the truth of Jesus' resurrection and why the angels announce the good news to the women first. The, gos the Gospel of Matthew records two very unique accounts of this empty tomb that was not recorded in the other three Gospels. That is, the tomb sealed and guarded in chapter 27, 62 to 66, and the stolen body story. These two accounts are unique to the Gospel of Matthew. So let us first look at the tomb sealed and guarded. What is the significance of posting the Roman soldiers to guard the tomb? A day after the crucifixion, last Friday, you all did the station of the cross. You all went through the reflection, how Jesus suffered and died and was crucified. A day after that, the chief priest asked Pilate for guards to be posted around Jesus' tomb. Why? To make sure that the body of Jesus remained where it was. Why did they do that? This is because they remembered Jesus three predictions of his death that three days after his death, 
he will rise again. Did they believe in Jesus' prediction? Of course not. Look at the word that was recorded. That deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. That deceiver, you can, can you feel the mocking voice of these Jewish leaders as they say that? That deceiver said, They call Jesus a deceiver. But they were, they were thinking in order to make sure that nothing goes wrong, they took extra precautions just in case, just in case the disciples may come to steal the body so they arranged for higher and tighter security around the tomb by asking for the Roman guards and putting a seal on the stone. But what's the significance of the Roman seal? The seal represents the full power and authority authority of the Roman Empire. This means when the seal is put in place, if anyone attempts to break that seal, you are taking on the might of the Roman Empire. Would you dare to do that? Would Jesus' frightened disciples have the courage to take on the might of the Roman Empire? Remember, where, where were the disciples now? On Friday, when Jesus was arrested, they chabut Larry. They ran for their life. They were in hiding, threatened that they might be arrested. Even Peter, who saw so uh, bravely that he will be willing to die for Jesus. What happened during the trial? He denied knowing Christ. Not once, not twice, but three times. Denied Christ. And the Roman guard, who are these Roman guards? The Roman guard unit, when they are on watch, comprises of four to ten highly trained Roman soldiers. These are Roman soldiers who have won battles after battles. These are highly trained Roman guards. And they knew that if they were to, to, to fail in their duties, they would be severely punished. But on Sunday morning, their worst fears came true. The tomb was empty. Although the Jewish leaders did everything in their power, sealing the tomb, hosting guards to make sure that the body of Jesus remained in the tomb, they failed. In fact, if you look at the evidence here, it shows that there was no possibility, no possibility of the body of Jesus being stolen. The Roman soldiers who had no problem defending the tomb against these frightened disciples. On 
On the third day, the tomb was empty. The body was gone. The precautions that the Jewish leaders took actually gave abundant, plenty of evidence of the truth of the resurrection. Without realizing it, these Jewish leaders, the Roman government, the seal on the stone, the Roman guards, they all become witnesses to prove that the tomb was empty, that Jesus had risen from the dead. Let me now go to the second uh, account here on the stolen body. Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 to 15. Here we see the guards went to the city, reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. They would have told the Jewish leader of the earthquake, appearing of the angels, and what had taken place. Of course, that by that time they were they fall down as dead. Too frightened, too terrified of the angels. They can win battles, no problem. They can fight armies, no problem. But angels, wow. Out of their experience, never in the battlefield have they fought against angels. And they just fell down as if they... When the news of Jesus' resurrection began to spread, the chief priests and the leaders knew they had a problem. Problem here now. For the Jewish leaders, it was unthinkable that this news, the truth of what actually happened when the God reported to them that the body was not in the tomb, cannot spread. This one cannot, cannot go out. So it was kept under OSA. All right, we are very familiar with OSA. Huh? All right. This thing must be kept under wrap. Actually, if the tomb is not empty, they could have just produced Jesus' missing body. And that would have put a stop to the people believing that Jesus rose from the dead. Just produce the body. The body cannot run away or not. So what did they do? Wow. Verse 13. They asked for the soldiers or the guards' cooperation. We must concord a story. You must say that his disciples came during the night and stole the body away while we were asleep. So, in the Jerusalem Straits Time, uh, Jerusalem Mail, Jerusalem Star, the main st uh, stream media, this was the news. All right? Guards found sleeping. Jesus' body stolen by his disciples. This was the, the headline, the breaking news. This was the story that they concocted to do damage control. They bribed the guards with a large sum of money to say they were sleeping on the job while the disciples stole his body away. Sleeping on the job. How many of you slept on your job? What would your boss do? If you think about it, this story doesn't make sense, right? If 
they were asleep, the soldiers, if they were asleep, how would they know who stole the body? Do you know what happened when you are asleep? If one of them, remember they fall to about four to ten guards, if one of them was not sleeping, then he would have awakened the others. Sound the siren, sound the alarm, wake the other sleeping soldiers up to chase the robbers away. Either way, the soldier would have committed a crime and would have been severely punished. Imagine, imagine, you are one of the Roman soldiers. Would you admit to sleeping on the job while guarding the tomb? You are one of the highly trained soldiers. Better warn. Would you admit, would you make up this story that you were sleeping on the job while guarding the tomb? Would you have admitted to failure of duty to your Roman commander? Soldiers are under command. In other words, the chief priests, they, what they were really asking the soldiers to do was to sign their death warrant. It would have been suicidal to say that they were sleeping on the job. The authorities must have given them a substantial sum of bribe to induce them to follow their deception. They even promised them protection that if the lie should come to Pilate's ears, they will pay him off. They promised to protect them from military charges for failing to guard the tomb. Obviously, the Jewish leaders must have inspected the tomb and realized that what the guards were telling the truth, that the body was not there. Otherwise, why would they cover up for the guards and pay them bribe to spread this concocted lie that they fell asleep? This stolen body was circulated among the Jews and many of them took it in. If you were among the Jews, would you have believed this stolen body theory? Closer to home, Okay. This story was recorded by Matthew in order to refute that deception that was circulating during that time. It was to counter this lie that was being spread by the Jewish chief priests. Back in 1923-24, Lenin, head of the Soviet Communist Party, he said this, a lie told often enough becomes the truth. And this was used to great effect by one of Hitler's propaganda ministers, Joseph Goebbels, during the Second World War, caused so much destruction to human life. Closer to home, we have the 1MDB scandal, where we have 
our XPM, Arab Donations Story. A tale that even beats the Arabian Nights. And he almost got away with it until the truth was exposed in the court. You see, whatever deception, whatever concocted story, whatever lies, how many layers you may put on that deception, it will not change the truth. And no amount of lies or bribes can alter or change the truth. Just look at the one MDB scan scandal, the amount of money involved. It's just mind-boggling. Coming back to the body of Jesus Christ, Jesus was crucified, laid in the tomb. On the third day, body is missing. It's only proof that Jesus is alive. Otherwise, producing the body of Jesus is the easiest and simplest and the best way to prove that Jesus was dead. That would have put an immediate stop to the disciples' proclamation of the resurrection of Jesus. Even with the Roman Empire behind them, the Jewish leaders could not produce the body of Jesus. Now, if you were to visit the world's second tallest pagoda, Farman Temple in Shanxi province in China, you will find a finger bone that is believed to belong to Gautama Buddha, the founder of the Buddhist religion, Buddhism. In fact, I read in the newspaper, this was way quite some time back, 2009, 6th of June 2009, a grand ceremony was held in this Farman temple to enshrine what is believed to be the middle finger of the left hand of Gautama Buddha. And today, this temple is a Buddhist place of pilgrimage due to the discovery of what is claimed as a true relic bone of Buddha. Brothers and sisters, today, till today, no bone of Jesus had ever been found anywhere on earth. No one has ever found any evidence that the body of Jesus was anywhere buried or left there, anywhere on earth. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. Can't be found. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. The third evidence the angel's announcement. The angel of the Lord came down from heaven, go into the tomb, roll back the stone, and sat on it. I won't go into the, the weight of the stone, all those things. You can read about all those uh, stone and the incline, how it was rolled back, all these things. doesn't matter. But why? Why? Why did the angel roll back the stone? Why did the angel did that? Did you ever wonder? 
why the angel of the Lord took the trouble to roll the stone back and sat on it. After all, Jesus' resurrected, glorified body can walk through locked doors. Nothing can keep that body away. It is resurrected, glorified body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why did Matthew record this? The reason is, the angel rolled away the stone, not to let Jesus out of the tomb, but to let the women and later the guards and the disciples to look in. Because if the stone had not been rolled away, the women and all the others would have thought that the body of Jesus was still inside the tomb. But with the stone rolled away, they came looking. The women came and they were looking for the body of Jesus. They were not looking for the reason Jesus. They had come to anoint the body of Jesus. But they did not find the body there when they look into the tomb. And the other thing is, why the angels announce to the women the angel said to the women announce to the women in fact this turned out to be one of the most compelling evidences what a privilege for the women who are so faithful, even to the end, when all the disciples had deserted and fled away, trying to save their lives, the women stayed. The women came. The women remained. And this turned out to be one of the most compelling evidences showing that the empty tomb story is true. And they were discovered not by men, but by women. Why is this so significant? It's because in Jesus' time, women held very little power or authority. In fact, in the court of law, the Jewish Law prohibited women from giving testimony. They are not accepted. They are not valid. So, if the resurrection uh, uh, story, if the resurrection story has been concocted by the disciples, as the Jewish leaders claim, women would never have been included as being the first witnesses. It's just not logical. Common sense tells us that the best reason the women were reported as holding this honour of being the first witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ demonstrate the truth. the resurrection of Jesus and the empty tomb. Today, as we look back, we see the power of the resurrection at work in the lives of Jesus' followers. The transformation, especially in the 12 apostles, is one of the greatest evidence for the resurrection power at work. Just look at the disciples before resurrection. 
They fled. They deserted Jesus. They denied Jesus. That was what happened. But after resurrection, fifty days after Jesus' resurrection, the apostles were proclaiming the good news of the gospel, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, witnessing and preaching boldly and courageously. And the authority saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that these men had been with Jesus. They were willing to risk their lives for the sake of their risen Lord and Saviour. All the apostles, except John, were martyred. Nobody, nobody would have given up their life for a lie. Yet, these apostles accepted death rather than deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They willingly lay down their lives to follow their master, to uphold the truth of the resurrection. In conclusion, as we look at the three evidences this morning and the power of the resurrection working in the lives of Jesus' disciples, it shows us that we stand on firm evidence with regards to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. On the third day, something amazing happened. Jesus defeated death to live again. No other empty tomb holds such significance as this and one and only empty tomb. It is a solid evidence that Jesus rose from the dead, and he is alive today. It was the resurrection that God vindicated Jesus after his humiliating death on the cross. It was the resurrection that demonstrated Jesus' victory over sin and death. And it was the resurrection that demonstrated Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross. And it was received by the Father with divine approval. That is why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we can confidently proclaim to our friends and those who still do not know Jesus that there is a resurrection and the life to come. And that is why Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Do you believe this? The resurrection proves that God the Father has accepted the Son's perfect sacrifice on the cross as a complete and perfect ransom for all time, for all eternity to anyone who believe 
in Jesus. So that just as Jesus was risen from the dead, one day we will follow. When either He comes again, we will be uh, caught up in the air, or if we have died, we will rise up from the dead. And we will be with our Lord and our Savior forever and ever. Let us pray. Father, we just want to give you thanks this morning that even as we see all the evidences recorded for us, so compelling that, Lord, it inspires our faith. It encourages us to know that we are following a risen Savior, a God who loves us, a God who is working His resurrected power in us so that we will continue to be your witnesses to proclaim the good news of the risen Christ so that people may come to know Him to love Him and to have a relationship with Him. So Father, may this Easter Sunday enable us, Lord, to be on the lookout for friends that we can share this good news so that we can share with them that the tomb is empty, that Jesus is risen, and that He will come back again to take us to be with Him forevermore. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. Indeed, Jesus is the resurrection and life. And I'd like to invite all of you to rise and join me to sing our closing song with all our hearts in Christ alone.
all just say this together? I am bought with the precious blood of Christ. Let's say this together. I am bought with the precious blood of Christ. Amen. I'd like to invite Elder Chen to close the service with prayer and benediction. Let's pray. God dismiss us today with a great comfort and assurance that you, the resurrected Lord, is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for us, completing the work that you have started in us. And so God, as we leave this place, grant us this great comfort through your words. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing that you may do His will, working in you that which is pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Elder Chen. Please be seated. The service is now over. Thank you for joining us. And please do stay back and join us for...